Good day, students. In this group, we're going to be going over an example on how to connect the graph of, um, how to connect the first derivative with the graph of, of the function. All right, so question one, uh, for the function, for the function f of x equals um, x to the two-third times x squared minus eight, um, what we're going to do a, find the, uh, all the critical points, find all the critical points, and then B, find the intervals, the intervals where, where F is um, increasing, uh, in decreasing and then lastly find the uh, relative find the uh, relative relative maximum the extrema okay max and or mean all right, so that's what we're going to be doing with this function right here and all these information that we need to find Basically, we have to use f prime to determine what this in, all these informations are concerning uh, the behavior of, of the graph of f, okay? All right, so first thing we have to do uh, is find the derivative of this function. So f of x equals x to the two-third times x squared minus 8. All right, so we can use the product rule here or just distribute and then use term-by-term -term differentiation. I like to distribute and use our term by term differentiation. So we're gonna have uh, f of x equals um, x, we distribute uh, x to the two thirds to these two terms in the parentheses. So using the law of exponents, whenever you multiply, you add the exponents, right? So you're gonna have x to the two third plus two over one, you add in this exponent and that one, minus x to the two third times eight, like that, okay? All right, let's, let's rewrite that properly. You can write it as 8x to the 2 thirds. So this is uh, right on the constant first. This is 8x to the 2 thirds. All right, now um, we'll find the LCD here times by 3 top and bottom. So this is going to be 6 over 3. So if we combine it, we'll have f of x equals 2 over 3 plus 6 over 3 is 8 over 3. All right, x to the 8 thirds minus 8x to the 2 thirds. All right, now we're going to use a power rule to find the derivative of this function by uh, executing a term-by-term -term differentiation, all right? So f prime of x is going to be 8 to the third, you power down the exponent, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent, 8 thirds minus 1, and then this one you power it down, multiply by 8, you have 16 over 3, x to the 2 thirds, after powering down the exponent, you subtract 1 from the power, okay? All right, so let's express this one as a fraction, and this one as a fraction also. And then uh, this will be written as 3 over 3 times it by 3 top and bottom to find the LCD times by 3 times by 3. Same story here, multiply by 3, multiply by 3. So the derivative, f prime of x, is going to be 8 third x to the 8 over 3 minus 3 over 3 uh, is... 5 over 3, so it's going to be x to the 5 thirds minus 16 over 3, and over here, x to the 2 thirds minus 3 over 3 is going to be negative 1 over 3, okay? So this is your, uh, this is your derivative right here, all right? So um, notice that this has a negative exponent, so it can be expressed as 8 over 3, x to the 5 thirds minus... 16 over 3x to the one third. Okay, so this is a function for your your derivative. Okay, all right. So um, where your critical points? Your critical points are where the derivative does not exist and where it's equal to zero. Okay, so if you take a look at this function, are there any points where this function is undefined? Absolutely. If you notice that you have a you have a um, variable in the denominator here, 
That means that x can assume a value that can cause this expression to be undefined, hence the whole expression um, is going to be undefined also. So, um, so to make it easier to see, let's go ahead and combine these two terms into one, and then you see that uh, there's a value that can cause this function to be undefined. So what I'm going to do, let's put this over 1, and there was the LCD of 3 and 3x to the 1 third, we have the x to the 1 third. So uh, to make them have identical denominators, I'm going to multiply this side by x to the 1 third, the denominator and the, num and the numerator x to the 1 third, okay? All right, so we're going to have the derivative f prime of x is going to be 8x to the... Remember, whenever you're multiplying exponents, you add the powers. 5 thirds plus 1 third is going to be 6 thirds over 3x to the 1 third. That minus 16 over 3x to the 1 third. Okay, now I can combine uh, these two. We're going to have 8. Now, 6 over 3 is 2, right? So 8x to the second power uh, minus 16 over 3x to the 1 third. All right? So you can see one critical point um, uh, is that when the denominator is equal to 0. Okay? So uh, critical point. Um, are when f prime of x dn e does not exist or uh, is equal to zero. All right, so one of the cases where it doesn't exist is when 3x to the one third is equal to zero because you have an undefined output there. All right, so let's solve this. Solve this, you divide both sides by three. And you have x to the one third equals zero. And then to isolate x, uh, you just cube both sides of this equation. Okay, raise the side to the th third power, raise to the third power. And then you have x equals 0. So this is one of your critical points. This is a critical point where f prime of x does not exist. Okay, f prime of x does not exist at x equals 0. All right? Okay. Now, uh, what we're going to do... Uh, next is find the other critical points, basically set the derivative to zero and solve, all right? So 8x squared, so um, set f prime of x to zero. So we're going to have um, 8x squared minus 16 over 3x to the one third equals zero, okay? All right, so to do this, we can simply uh, cross multiply, put this over one. And then when you cross multiply, you have 8x squared minus 16 equals 0. Okay? Add 16 to both sides. You have 8x squared equals 16. Divide by 8. You're going to have x squared equals 2. And when you root both sides, you have x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. All right? So your critical points are where f prime of x does not exist, 0, and these are the two. So your critical points are basically um, negative root 2, 0, and root 2. Okay? All right. So now what we're going to do next is uh, we want to find uh, the intervals where it's um, increasing or decreasing. This is the a part. So where is it increasing or decreasing? So all we have to do is we're going to set up a number line with our intervals and determine the sign change because we know the sign change tells us the behavior of f the sign i'm sorry the sign of f prime tells us the behavior of, of f okay all right so we have zero at the center let's put zero at the center here for the first boundary point negative root two is about one negative one point four and then one two three four five six one two three four five six root two over here okay so we're going to be testing one, two, three, four intervals. Okay, so this is interval number one, interval two, interval three, interval four. Okay, so for interval one, we're going to pick, let's pick x equals, um, let's see, x equals uh, negative three, will suffice here. Since we know this is approximately 1.4. So x equals negative 3 for this one. This one can use x equals negative 1. For this one, use x equals positive 1. 
and then for here we're going to test x equals 3. Okay? All right, so the function that we're going to be testing um, our intervals on is f prime of x equals 8x squared minus 16 over 3x to the one third. Okay? So interval 1, we're going to test x equals um, negative 3. All we care about is the sign. So we're going to do f prime of negative 3, which is equal to um, 8 times negative 3 squared minus 16 over 3 times negative 3 to the 1 third. Okay? All right, we're going to use a calculator to compute what this is going to be. All right, I'm going to be using a TI-89. Um, there are different ways we can do it. We can enter this in the graphic menu or just use the home screen. I'm going to show you a trick that you can use. You can do using the home screen. Uh, so first of all, let's make sure X has nothing assigned to it. So X is X. All right, so what we're going to do, uh, let's enter the expression. The expression is 8X to the second power minus 16 divided by divided by um, 3x to the 1 third, 1 over 3, so then parentheses. All right, so I'm just going to enter the expression. All right, so this is the expression 8x squared minus, well, it kind of simplified it a little bit, 8x squared minus 16x over 3x to the 1 third. All right, so first test value is negative 3, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take negative 3, and I'm going to store it in x. So negative 3 has been stored in x. I'm going to call up this um, expression. Enter, enter. Uh, that's the answer, but what do we care about? We care about the sign. Okay, if you want an approximate result, you can hit down and enter. All we care about is the sign. So we can see that it's negative here. So I'm at x equals negative 3. It's negative. Um, let me do a, another one while I add it. For negative 1, negative 1, we're going to store negative 1 in x. And then let me call that function up again. Enter, enter. That's positive. Okay. So let's let's write it down. So in this case, it's um, so f prime of negative three is negative. What does that mean? The function is going to be decreasing here. And then our second test test point we did was x equals negative one. F prime of negative 1 is what you get when you plug in a negative 1 into the function. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to have um, 8 times negative 1 squared minus 16 over 3 times negative 1 to the 1 third. All right. And we found out that F prime of 1 is, uh, is, uh, is what? It's positive. Okay. Which indicates that it's increasing on that interval. All right, it was 8 thirds or something like that. Okay, and then we have two more intervals to test. We're going to test um, x equals 1. So f prime of 1, we have to compute 8 times uh, 1 squared minus 16 over 3 times 1 to the 1 third. And then lastly, we have to compute x equals 3. f prime of 3, we need to know just the sign. That's all we care about is the sign 8 times 3 squared minus 16 over 3 times 3 to the 1 third. Okay? So f prime of uh, 1 is what? We don't know yet. We're going to find out in a minute. And f prime of 3. Okay, so let's do those two back to back so we don't have to go back and forth. Um, I'm going to store uh, 1 in x. Call back that function that we entered. Negative at f at x equals 1. And then lastly, let's store uh, 3 in x. Call back the function. And it's positive. Okay? So we, um, f1 here is, is, uh, is, I forgot already. It's, it was a uh, negative. Yeah? Okay, it was negative. Okay. So f prime of 1 is negative, And f of 3 was positive. All right, so it's increasing there. Here it's decreasing, and here it's increasing. Okay, so let's go back to our funk to our number line. So here it was. Um, so we have let's see, negative positive, negative positive. So it was negative here, negative here, positive here, positive here. Okay, 
So it was decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. All right, so there goes your intervals. All right, so um, the problem initially says if you state the intervals as increasing and decreasing. So let's go ahead and state that for option B. So it's increasing, it's increasing from negative root two to zero and uh, root two all the way to infinity, okay? And then it's decreasing from negative infinity to negative root two and uh, from zero to root two, okay? So those were the intervals that we got where it's increasing and decreasing, okay? All right, so um, where our extrema is gonna be our max and min, option C. So if it's decreasing here, it's going down, and increasing here, you have a relative uh, minimum at negative root two, and the same story here is decreasing and then increasing there, so there has to be a relative minimum at root two. How about here? Is it increasing or decreasing? Remember, at zero, the derivative does not exist, so we do not have an extrema at that value, okay? So um, you only have a relative max or mean when the derivative attains a value of zero. It never attained a value of zero here, it just did not exist, okay? All right, so um, it has relative, relative uh, minima at x equals negative root two and root two, okay? So there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Now feel free to use to my channel by clicking up here to subscribe and uh, please post the comments to let me know what you think about this presentation. More clips can be found on mygoserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.